Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1291. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about XRP Las Vegas 2024. And I'm going to interview Brad Kimes of Digital Perspectives. And he's going to give us all the details on the conference. I can't wait to share this with you. Here we go. All right. It's my pleasure to have Brad Kimes today and talk about Las Vegas 2024 XRP coming at you. How you doing, Brad? I'm doing really great, Linda. Thank you for having me. Super excited about the conference. Oh, me too. And this is so cool because you've been so generous to interview me many times and I love being able to interview you. So today it's all about you and the conference and really getting down to the nitty gritty of what it's all about, who should go, what we're going to experience this year. I have to tell everyone that last year was such an amazing experience that I am so excited to go again. I'm already set airfare, hotel, ticket, everything ready to go. I'm there for sure. So tell us, Brad, What is the conference all about this year? Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Linda. And uh, thank you for the kind words about last year's conference. It was our first go around and it was quite scary, but exciting all at the same time. And, you know, the same thing again this year. Look, I I, I have to say this. I have to say this. You know, if you ever want to test your relationship in life, Put on a conference. That's I mean, that's all you got to do. You know, it's either that or play Pictionary because those two things can end a relationship. They really, they really can. If you can't guess what your partner's drawing, it could be, it could cost you everything. And, you know, when you're doing a conference, it's much the same thing. You're putting all this effort and energy and trying to create this really great experience. And at the same time, you know, not lose your mind or your life and finances, you know, in the process. And it really is, it really is that kind of a juggling thing. So with the first year's conference going really great, you're and you're absolutely right. It would turn out to be a great success, right? We had Brad Garlinghouse show up as a surprise VIP guest that was super cool. And so many incredible companies uh featured on stage on the second day of the conference. This year's conference in 2024 is going to be slightly different, right? So we're looking to grow the conference and not only in size of attendees, but in the experience itself, right? So what we're working with now is moving from the location we were before to now we're going to be at MGM Grand, which is going to be a beautiful facility. You will be able to get discounted room links for your stay directly at the facility and they are discounted rooms that are already built into the link. You just have to book it and you get the price automatic in your, in your, uh, in your booking. And, you know, the tickets are priced this year. If you actually look at the way we decided to do this, just coming at it from a cost aspect for people, you know, we decided to do this this year where the two day general admission ticket is actually on average cheaper than what the one day ticket was last year. Right. So we really sat down and thought about how can we do this and grow the experience, you know, make it a deeper, more interactive experience for everyone who comes and also bring the price down slightly, which we did. Right. And then for the VIP, which is obviously a, a, a different price and a different investment there. But we did something very special this year. So VIP last year was really just priority seating at a nice table at the front of the stage, which was really great. This year, there will be a VIP lounge running the entire two days of the conference where you can hang with others like yourself who are like-minded and looking to network and grow those relationships in a deep, meaningful way 
because that is going to be the area where you're going to run into the top industry executives, the speakers, the panelists, right? As well as people, as I said, that are like yourself, where you really want to take your conversations to another level inside of that experience and really great food, great lounge area and those things. And there's going to be an incredible sponsor for that VIP lounge you're going to absolutely love. So between that VIP experience the pricing of the tickets for everyone on the two day event. And then knowing that this year we're going to have an exhibitor area an exhibitor floor where there'll be some companies featured as well as the conferences taking place over two days. This is going to be a remarkable experience. So Brad, we didn't give the date of the conference. So you said it's two days. It's a Friday and Saturday in May, May 3rd and May 4th. Okay, May 3rd, 24. May 3rd, okay. May 4th. Well, I had to think about it for a second. I was like, wait yeah, a minute. Me too. That wrong. <laughs> okay. And we're at the MGM Grand. And I think what was so cool about last year is it might be your musical background, but there was like this rock concert atmosphere to being there. Like it wasn't like any conference I've been to. And I've been to a lot of conferences. And back when I was on Wall Street, I used to go to financial conferences every year. We had different ones, and they were really good. But they were nothing like what you did. Like you did something that I don't know, the camaraderie there in the room, even though there were hundreds of people, it was like it was a small group and everyone knew each other. And some of us do because of Twitter and, and others. And some of them are there were a lot of influencers there that people knew and recognized. And so there was just this familiarity to everyone in this, but this camaraderie because we're all fans of XRP. We're all invested in XRP and we've been following it for so long. We've been following your show and it's just, I don't, I can't explain it. What do you have to say about the, the atmosphere and the camaraderie that you create? Well, thank you very much for that. And, and you're right in, in the aspect that I did want to make this a special vibe, right? I, I like to create a special energy because I've been to a few conferences in the crypto world and other conferences in my musical career, playing events for corporate events, things of that nature and stuff. And when I approached this thing, you know, I actually, you know, I told uh, Mrs. Backup, I said, you know, I want to make this feel really electric, right? Like, you know, because... And in large part, not for some kind of gimmick, but because I knew that the people in the companies that were going to be on stage are in fact electric and it's what they deserve, right? It, they deserve to be seen and showcased at a very, very high level. And that's what we wanted to do. And I did take and lean into my entertainment, you know, background and my music background to make the stage and the room feel very much like a concert that's getting ready to take place or like a, a stand-up comedian that's going to come out and talk or something, you know, very much an event and er all eyes on stage, no question about it. Yeah, it was very effective. It, it did feel like the excitement in the audience was so, you know, it was just people were just excited, you know, excited for it to start, excited for the next speaker. It was just the whole thing, all the, all the way along, everything was just exciting, exciting. And then Brad Garlinghouse showed up and that was a surprise and people went crazy. Well, I tell you, if anybody ever says that I can't keep a secret, you know that they're lying because <laughs> I'd known that for a long time and I couldn't say a word about it. And you know, uh, I think that speaks a lot too, right? Like, I mean, you know, for people, just so they understand the background of that, that had been in talks for a while before the conference had come about the last time, right? And that's the thing I'd say is, is that, you know, um, there were a lot of people while we were doing this thing, inter-community people that really were trying to sabotage everything we were doing at the same time we're going about this event and it's the kind of thing you have to learn to work through. And the entire time that that was happening when social media were being attacked for, you know, even trying to do something for the community and those types of things, which is a reality. Every time you try to grow, people attack you for trying to grow and serve others. And that's OK, because I knew the whole time that we were going through that that we're in the middle of talking and communicating with Brad Garlinghouse and these people are beating us up. And all I'm trying to do is make this event more great for the people who are really good people in this space. Like so. Yeah. And that was something you couldn't advertise. You couldn't talk about it, but you knew he was going to show up 
And people were kind of whispering and hoping he might show up. And then he did with the bodyguards. And it was just, it was insane. It was crazy. It was awesome. It, it really, it was insane. And I have to say, you know, it even as somebody who knew it was going to happen, like, you know, going through the, the necessary things that have to happen for someone of Brad's caliber to, to be at an event like that. I was so, I was so blown away at like the measures that you, the hoops that you must go through right to to satisfy that kind of a commitment and that and I was happy to do it but I mean it was what a lesson that was right it was a true lesson for me there and in all of this I would share with people to say when I say today in, about the conference on May third May fourth twenty twenty four that I can't tell you everything that's being worked on. Just remember the story about Brad showing up and nobody knew, you know what I mean? It's like, there's so many, and, and, it, and I'm talking, what I'm talking about speaks outside of ripple. Now there are other events that are just as superb and fantastic about other companies that are participating that I haven't been able to share yet. It's still coming. Wow. Well, one thing that you've done in order to have this caliber of speaker is have really tight security. Do you want to talk about the security provided? Yeah, uh, you know, security is number one for us. Again, this goes back to my musical, professional musical background. You know, when I play events and I do bigger events, whether I'm, you know, behind the stage, you know, as a musician performing, the level of security at events I've been to is always you know, what it needs to be. And that was something we knew right out of the gate that we were not going to cut corners on. And in fact, I think we actually, you know, kind of multiplied and leaned into the idea of security because we want everybody to come and understand that they're in a safe place. We want everybody to come and understand that there's rules here. You're making an investment here, which is really an educational trip to have this kind of experience, networking, to be around top industry leaders and officials. It's like, you know, it, it it's the way it needs to be, right? And and we really did, uh, we really did step into the idea of having a nice layer of security for ourselves and for everyone attending the conference. Yeah, absolutely. And we all felt really safe and protected. Absolutely. But tell us some of the speakers that you've already secured that you can announce. All right. So the ones we can talk about, right? So uh, where do we start here? So, all right, look, we know Uphold's going to be participating in a very big way. I don't want to hammer out exactly who that's going to be just yet at this time, but, and that's only because we're, they're already committed, right? That's not a big deal, but we're still hammering out what that commitment looks like. And it is going to be fantastic. I can promise you that. And we know that I trust capital is going to have a very big presence and they will be on stage and you're going to love what they have to say on stage. I can guarantee you that too. And then uh, let's move over to uh, John Deaton will be back this year and there's going to be a lot to talk about. And we're going to have Jeremy Hogan uh, participate on a panel as well. And Eleanor Terrett from Fox will be with us. We will have Perry Ann Boring from the Chamber of Digital Commerce will be with us. And there may be a special guest or two to go along with that panel. So to be determined or to be announced, I should say, right? Because it's already being worked on. And then we're going to have Honorable Chris Giancarlo, the former CFTC chairman, now head of the Digital Dollar Project. The and I haven't even told you the other one. I can't even talk about the other ones yet. That, I mean, how about that for an opener? That's amazing. That's awesome. So what is the focus this year? Like when you thought about the theme, what was the overall theme and focus of the conference? What are people going to get out of it? And that's a great question. And I'd say that the, the best way to look at the themes this year is like trade fi Builders, policy and web three. And this covers a lot of different areas, right? Obviously, you know, uh, policy is going to be a huge discussion this year, right? Not only because of the important court cases that have happened so far, which by the way, have forced 
the SEC to bow down to the idea of a spot Bitcoin ETF, not because they wanted to, right? So I think that's an important thing to understand the impact of these court cases and the companies like Ripple and Coinbase that are strong enough and grayscale to take the SEC on. So policy, policy, policy is going to be a very big conversation this year. Uh, Quincy Jones is going to be back this year to do an amazing talk. He was absolutely brilliant at the last XRP Las Vegas. He will not disappoint again. And uh, we're going to have Jay Cambo also from Spend the Bits, who is a builder. And what he has built is really going to blow people's minds if they're not aware of what Spend the Bits is and what it does. They're going to absolutely love it. And, you know, uh, the conversation about policy is going to extend into a great talk with Perry Ann Boring from the Chamber of Digital Commerce as well, right? She's so in tune to what's happening on Capitol Hill right now and trying to do the things she needs to to stop Elizabeth Warren and the crypto ban that she's out after, which, by the way, really goes over into self-custody. So even if you're not really wrapped up into the proof of work and the mining issue, you better not like this bill because of the self-custody aspect that they want to take away from all of us. Yeah, that's scary. So, and there's a, a dinner the night before, right? How does the dinner fit in with the event and how are they different? And we want to make sure that people understand their separate purchases, separate investments. A hundred percent. What a great question. Uh, yes. Yeah, so there, there is the XRP Las Vegas conference. You can get a general admission ticket or a VIP ticket for that two days. All the tickets are a two-day ticket. There is an after-party ticket that you can buy for the last day of Saturday. It's a pool party, going to be a luau-style event. That's a separate purchase. On Friday night, after the first day of the conference, there is the Future of Digital Assets Benefit Dinner that is put on by Chamber of Digital Commerce. So Perry M. Boring and the Chamber of Digital Commerce are going to be doing this Future of Digital Asset Benefit Dinner, which will have special guests in a, and I think they're going to be doing, don't hold this, it's still early, but I think they're going to be doing some kind of a fireside chat, I believe, with some of these special guests. So Brad Garlinghouse, again, will be the special guest, John Deaton, Christian Carlo, Michael Arrington, right? Now, there there also may be a performance at this thing. So we it's still a little early to know all the details here, but I can tell people that ticket is a separate ticket to participate and support the Digital Chamber of Commerce, right? Or Chamber of Digital Commerce, excuse me. That ticket is also a classifies as a charitable deduction. So if you make the investment to go to that, you will also be able to write that off, which is really a nice benefit to go along with that. Right. So when they go to your website, they're going to see that optional Thursday night charitable dinner. Or and Friday night. Yeah. I'm sorry, Friday night? Yes. Friday night dinner. And then they're going to see the two day tickets and VIP ticket and pool party ticket on your website. So all of that's there, just to be clear. Uh, yes. They can choose what they want to go to. Correct. Absolutely right. Yeah. And there is an FAQs page that pretty much covers everything. And if there's something there that you're not sure of, we do have a contact section, which we're checking, monitoring throughout the day with staff. If it's not myself, it could be staff. Um, but also there is a nice sponsor exhibitor tab application on the site as well. So if you're a developer or a company, a new project, and you're looking to have a presence at XRP Las Vegas, you can go and fill out that application to learn more about what you need to know about participating at XRP Las Vegas 24. Awesome. That is so cool. So Brad, who do you think is the ideal person to attend? Oh, what a great question. It is a range of people, right? We, when we put these conferences together, we try to focus on the range of people in this space. So literally, you know, from the depth of roster on stage and the conversations happening on stage, when you think about, you know, the the Honorable Christian Carlo, right? You think about 
chamber of digital commerce, right? You think about those level of people, John Deaton and things of that nature, uh, taking on very real current topics. These are topics that apply to top industry leaders want to hear these conversations. You know, experts in this space, right? Long-term investors in this space, newbies want to hear about this. We're really trying to structure these conversations and experiences to really handle uh, an amazing uh, interactive experience for the newbie to the top industry executive. And I, and I think that we're going to get that done. I, I believe we're going to get that done this year. I think so too. What do you say to the people who say XRP hasn't mooned yet, so therefore I can't go, or I don't think it's the right time to go or whatever. I've seen some of this, you know, negativity, the FUD. What do you tell the FUDsters? You know, everybody has their own journey and everybody as an individual has to take a look at where you are in your life. And when I see people say, I can't afford to go to that or it's too expensive, I say to myself, then you shouldn't go. You should not go, right? And 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 you're not ready. You're not in a place. Or when you see, another thing I'll see is comments where people say, Oh, for that, I could buy this much XRP instead of going to the event. Well, then you should do that. Because the truth is, unless you're in a place where you know that financially going to this, this conference is going to deepen your experience, your knowledge and understanding in this space and helping to develop uh, network relationships that maybe you can solidify in person that you were doing online and really meet people face to face. Maybe it's not the right thing for you to do right now. I, I told lots of people this last year. I don't want people to come if they're going buying crypto or going to the conference. It's like handle your business first, get your life straightened out. And if you're like, and, and I'm not saying that your life is like out of order because of you doing something wrong. But if your life is in a place where you're having to force to look at that decision, maybe coming should be off the table right now and maybe focusing more on the strategy that makes your life stronger and more uh, secure financially is the right step to take forward. And eventually you'll know when it's the right time to come. I didn't go to the first Bitcoin conference either. You know what I mean? I didn't go to the first Bitcoin conference after I found out about Bitcoin conference, right? So because I wasn't in a place where I needed to do so at that time. I took time, I learned, I made the investments, things grew. My knowledge got to a place where it was like, obviously it was the next organic step for me to start going to conferences, right? So I just think that's the best and uh, uh, most holistic way to approach it. I think that's a fantastic answer. And you know what's funny, Brad? I booked my airfare before you even had the tickets for sale. That's how excited I was to come to your conference because it was so much fun last year. I was like, I can't wait to go. And I was one of the first people to buy tickets when you put the page up because I, I can't even explain what it was like to be around people of who think like us, who have done the research, who understand the intellectual capacity of the technology, who understand the investment side of the technology, just the amazing people in the community. It was an experience unlike anything else. And I couldn't wait to go back a second time. So <laughs> well, I was so excited to buy my ticket and go. Well, it's it means a lot that you went out and did that to us, right? Because it it really speaks to the fact of the kind of experience that you had. And you had a great performance on stage. You participated on stage in a panel that was one of the best panels on stage. And I'm not saying that to play into the fact that we're talking right now. That is the response that was come back from the actual last conference. That was a very, very good panel about investment. Everyone was absolutely excited about that. And I will say there will be some breakout rooms uh, aside from where the conference is happening, where we'll probably do some special things interacting with companies too. So watch out for that, which could be very much reminiscent to the approach of last year's conference or soon to be last year's conference, right? But I will say, for those that are excited about the conference and those that are, are in a point in their life where this makes sense to them as the next logical step to come and make those real physical connections, 
you're right, Linda. You can't put a price on it because, you know, solidifying those relationships with people you've known for years on social media in itself is, is worth its price for admission. Being in the same room with the people that you see every day on social media that are, you know, top industry leaders and high profile people in this space and interacting with them is Again, another level of experience that really solidifies your understanding of where you are, what the journey really is about here, and the the, the conversations and the networking. I can't tell you the level of deals that got done between people. I still get people to send me messages. They're like, I made a deal with this one and that one and this one at XRP Las Vegas. I'm so glad that I made the choice to go. And again, that comes back to if your life is in a place where you're ready to do something like that, then there is a lot of opportunity there for those that are prepared for that kind of next step. Awesome. So I did buy a VIP ticket. I think they're going to sell out first. What do you think, Brad? Well, you know, uh, Linda, you're 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 a uh, you're you're a bit of a fortune teller here because I can tell you that ticket sales have been very strong, and we actually expected right before the holidays they would kind of be you know slow get, get past Christmas, but ticket sales have been very strong, and the majority of sales that are selling are VIP tickets right now, and they will sell out. And I've told people this, Linda, and I said it at the conference last time. We will sell out. And I know a lot of people that, oh, he's just hyping it. He's just hyping it. I'm not just hyping it. This happened last time. People would call with the most heartfelt messages that they just wanted one ticket or two tickets. And we didn't have it to give them because, you know, out here at these facilities in Vegas, it's very serious when they do capacity and th these things. It's a fire marshal issue. Like we don't have the wiggle room to put one more in. Like, when they say that this is the end of the sales, that's where it stops, right? So um, it, this this event will sell out again. And you're right, VIP tickets, tickets are going to sell out before general admission does. Awesome. Well, that's so great, Brad. I'm so excited. I can't wait for May. <laughs> <laughs> I, we can't either. And for a couple of reasons. One, because of everything that we have planned. And two, because once we get there, it's almost over, right? So... <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Is there anything else that you want to tell people that's going to happen or that they're going to see their experience that we haven't already talked about? I would just I would just say as a final thought for people that, you know, if this is something you're considering, you will not be let down. And that is not an upsell. That is just me telling you, I know what is coming and I know what I'm allowed to talk about at this point or not. And I know that those things are going to come to fruition. So, it, it, you know, if you were considering coming last time, you're not going to want to miss this time. I mean, you're really not going to want to miss it. It is going to be a remarkable experience. And I'm not saying that like, you know, there's some surprise, surprise or whatever. I just I know what's coming together at putting this all you know what I mean? And and by the and as we get finalized with sponsors and their positions and stuff, we'll start rolling out more of those ripples already all over the site. You know, who's going to be there for ripple? Because somebody is. I can't say who just yet, but it, you know what I mean? I, I just what could I, I say? The fact that somebody from Ripple is going to be up on stage talking about our, you know, some of our largest investments. Um, this is exciting. This is very exciting. It is super exciting. And I mean, I, look, again, I, I just say to anybody who's, if you haven't been to a conference and if you're like, if you're like, I met so many people who are like, I'm in the crypto, but my spouse isn't in the crypto. So I was, I didn't know if I could come by myself. You know, it felt weird to come by myself. Don't feel weird. If, if it's just you or you, your spouse doesn't want to go, get the ticket and come because you're going to be around a lot of people that are just like you and you're going to feel like you've you're going to feel like you've come home right because you're going to feel like these are my people right everyone knows about xrp and they all love it they all love the excitement behind it and the use case utility that i believe over the next couple of years here we're about to see take off to a level we've never witnessed 
Yeah. I think if your spouse isn't that supportive, bring them to Vegas with you. Okay. Let them do something else during the conference. And then during meals and around the hotel, you're going to run into all these really awesome people and they're going to pick up conversation over drinks and hear people talking about it. They're going to get excited just from the periphery of what's going on, even if they don't attend the conference. So I think it's worth it to, to have them come. Yeah. Well, you make a very good point that if you do want to bring your spouse, it's Vegas, right? There's lots for them yeah. to do. They can go to the pool. They can go gamble. My goodness, there's so many choices there. Um, and, you know, they will see a energy to this thing that they don't get to see when their spouse is home just watching things on YouTube or the Internet. Uh, you're going to see an energy here that really is palpable. I mean, it's it it gets in you. Yeah, when you see all these people who are all excited about this investment, it's not just you talking to your spouse about it, but you see this whole community of people that are just like so, you know, following it every single day, every single step. They know what's going on. They're like, hey, this thing is this thing is going to happen. It's just a matter of the timing. But we are on board with something very exciting, something very important, life changing. That's going to change the whole economy and the way we live. So it's it's this is. This is a big trend and a, and a huge opportunity for people to come and find out about it, I think. Thank you. And I really I, I have to concur with you because I do believe that we are we are lucky. And well, I don't want to say lucky. We've done the work. Right. Lucky is almost an insult. You know, uh, we've done the work to inform ourselves about a technology and a company that is sitting on the precipice of unlocking a new way the financial system is going to work. And how many times in life do you get to do that, right? And how many times in life do you get to do that and bring somebody with you that can watch it unfold on stage and right in front of you and see the amazing companies that will be exhibiting in this space and think about where they're going to be three to five years from this coming year, you know, knowing what's about to happen. So it, it is a remarkable time for all of us, no question. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brad. That was amazing. And I'm counting the days. Can't wait to see you in May and tell Danielle, good for her for hanging in there and supporting you and doing a lot of work herself, because I know she is one busy lady behind the scenes. And uh, you two together are a power couple and a dynamo team. So I know your relationship just gets stronger from this. So, <laughs> it, well, it, it, it's, that's, that's, that is an understatement. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Everybody likes the idea of power couple until you got to do the dirty stuff to do it. You know what I mean? It's like, woo, I tell you, I this thing, and I want to be very clear, this thing would not happen if it wasn't for my wife being the other side of this because super, super on top of things when it comes to logistics and all things that way, detail oriented. It's not the prettier side of it. You know what I mean? She's not on TV. She doesn't get to do the, you know, all the talking and all of this stuff. She does all that grunt stuff and it doesn't happen without her. Right. And I tell her all the time, it's absolutely true. It just doesn't happen without her, but we're 126 days, nine hours and 18 minutes and 40 seconds away from this conference. And I can assure people out here, if there's anything for sure, is this conference will sell out before we get to that 126 days. Okay, awesome. Well, I hope whoever is listening is gonna join us because it's gonna be amazing. So thank you so much, Brad. Linda, thank you for having me. Always great to see you. My pleasure. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.